Hello everyone, I am Halsey Lion and I would like to welcome you back to Bandit's Ballads. Today's chapter is a very special one because at the end of my most popular video of all time, I've said the following thing. If I were to do this in a playthrough series, it would have probably taken Ukzug 5 episodes to get to where he is right now. Well, here we are. Honestly, I wanted to do something different for episode 5, but my past self has set some expectations for my current self and so, today we shall at least try to accomplish the same feat Ukzug achieved in a single video. We have everything we need to get there. A renowned clan that is about to get even more infamous, a gang of 41 ironborn reavers that can accommodate at least a dozen more, and a financial situation that's stable enough to keep us going for several months at least. But most importantly, throughout my journey in Calradia, I've regained some of the skills that got knocked out of my skull upon my arrival. Thing is, I don't yet know what skills I would like to keep training next. Eventually, my leadership is going to require some development, but there's no point to focus on it right now because there's no way I'm going to lead a proper army anytime soon. Stewardship is another great skill to take into consideration, but I don't know. Perhaps I can hire somebody else to manage the logistics of the crew in my stead, so I can dedicate my time towards training my combat aptitudes, but... Uh, ah, fuck it, I'll do it myself. But before I do, maybe I should spare some attention to Charm. I'm not sure how much I'll barter with the noble inhabitants of Calradia, but if I do, it would be useful to strike a better deal. Besides, I've always been a charming fellow, in a brutal, violent sort of way. And what about my crossbow skill? I'm not sure whether this will be my primary way of fighting, but I cannot deny its effectiveness, at least on softer targets. But all this self-reflection doesn't actually develop my skills, I will still need to take the time to train each of them. Although staying focused makes this whole ordeal a lot easier. And let's not forget the impressive arsenal I've managed to put together. A well-crafted axe that can kill an enemy in one hit, a shield to protect me from arrows, and a fully loaded crossbow that can help me ravage entire groups of enemies all by myself. Speaking of which... Let's put it to the test. And what better way to do that other than shooting looters? So as soon as I saw a party of 18, my party took after them, but when we caught up, they merged with another gang of 10. That's even better, because if I'm able to defeat a mob of 28 with just my crossbow, that's enough to justify the effort that went into obtaining this weapon. Because I didn't want them interfering in my research, my men were told to stay far away from the action and only intervene if I am to suffer a concussion. As for myself, I rode towards my uh, test subjects and started shooting at them, hitting head after head after head. After five consecutive headshots, most of these thieves realized that they're powerless to stop me, so they chose to run away. After the sixth, all of them decided to save themselves, but I wasn't going to forfeit some free athletics experience. So as you know from past episodes, I've done this. And I'll keep doing this every chance I get, because athletics is the most important combat skill and I must not let any training opportunity slip by. At the end of my experiment, I gained 360 gold, which is enough to pay the wages of my crew for precisely one day. Still, I didn't get into this fight for the money, so that's a nice bonus on top of the things I actually wanted and eventually received. A bit of skill development and most importantly, the certainty that I can actually destroy entire groups of peasants all by myself. But hell, those were looters, not peasants. Are you sure about that? Do you even know how looters come into being? If not, let me clue you in. Out there in the world, there's some bad people who do terrible things to others. Stealing, killing, robbing, raiding, you know, people like me. And when those really bad people come and take everything, and burn down their homes and their fields, some of these villagers have no choice but to turn to a life of crime, becoming the very thing that destroyed their peaceful way of life. And if the looters survive long enough, they may even join actual gangs of bandits, who roam the forests or the mountains or the deserts. It's a cycle of violence that cannot be stopped, unless the entirety of mankind comes together and collectively 
vows to never do this to each other ever again. But let's be realistic, that will never happen. Not in a thousand years, not in ten thousand years, not in forty thousand. I am powerless to stop this cycle, even if I wanted to, so for now, I shall do the best thing I'm qualified to do. Profit from it. Ensure that I will not be crushed by the wheels of this cycle. Who started the cycle? Nobody knows for sure, but one thing is absolutely certain. Even without me, the cycle would continue without interruption because the nobility, who are supposed to be the shining beacons of humanity, have already been doing this for centuries, millennia even. But philosophy was never my strongest suit. That would be violence, so I kept doing what I do best and extracted a bit more combat experience out of these looters, until my athleticism reached a third of its maximum potential, unlocking the ability to run a bit faster when not burdened by shields or ranged weapons. My proficiency in one-handed also increased to the point where I'd make better use of my shield, and my newfound crossbow skill would allow me to aim with improved speed. But there's still a long way to go before I become a deadly warrior that strikes fear into his enemies' hearts. So for now, the looting must continue. Speaking of, I earned a total of 869 dinars from all the looters I've killed in these last couple of days. Plus whatever shitty gear I got off their corpses. About a year ago, when I was just getting started, 800 gold was a tidy sum, but nowadays... That's not even enough to pay the wages of my men for three days, so I needed bigger scores. Maybe these villagers from Golarin have something nice? Only one way to find out. When we finally caught up, my party found itself in the middle of an enemy settlement whose militia would join the peasants against me. And under normal circumstances, I'd have allowed my marks to walk out of there so I can ambush them without any interference. But these weren't normal circumstances because the local militia has been weakened by years of constant raids, and they could not possibly be a threat to me or my gangmates. So when the fighting began, my archers and cavalry were told to stay out of this because they weren't needed. Of course, they'd still get their fair share of the spoils, but this was something I could handle with just my infantry. Well, to be honest, if we fought these peasants with our full strength, the battle would have ended in a matter of seconds, and I would have missed out on some easy experience. After effortlessly cutting them down, those who remained tried to save themselves, and once the dust has settled, we've looted 133 gold coins, which means the peasants must be carrying a total of 1300. That isn't necessarily great, but it does qualify as a proper score if we could manage to actually rob them. But when I caught up with the survivors, they refused to part with their money, so I had to teach them a lesson in violence. When the class was over, I allowed one of my students to escape, thinking that my lessons would convince him to honor my request. He did not, but because I respected his courage, I wanted to grant him the honor of dying by my hand. However, I took that a bit too literally and dropped all of my weapons on the ground, thinking I can best a peasant with just my bare hands. But I missed both of my strikes, and the Reaper's scythe made short work of me. He must have felt a bit of pride for that before my soldiers put him down and took the rest of his stuff. Not all of his gold, though. Only he knows where he stashed it before he perished. All in all, these three attacks rewarded us with less than 400 gold, which wasn't even a quarter of what our victims were carrying. That's disappointing, to say the least, but the raids must continue. And I mean that in a literal sense, because I absolutely have to train my rogue abilities, and the only way to do so at the moment is by raiding villages and putting them to the torch. If you wanna get technical, there's multiple methods of advancing this skill, but most of them require me to sneak into a town, which is an impossible task without unlocking this perk, so you see, the only way forward is through theft and arson. But for that, I needed more manpower, so I went into the nearest village and convinced the locals to send some people to fight for my cause. Four footmen and a couple of archers were all they could spare, which was a decent contribution for the moment. I'd have preferred some cavalry for the mobility bonus they provide, but as long as I have people to fight in my name, I'm satisfied. 
After that we made our way towards Veron and coerced the locals into doing the exact same thing. And they were even more generous, allowing 5 horsemen and 4 infantry to join my cause. Of course, my party could not accommodate all those men, so I had to release 4 looters from my service. That's probably for the better, since looters are guaranteed to lose their lives because they refuse to use shields or wear proper armor. All other soldiers use the loot they take from battles to invest into better equipment, but a looter is happy to be a looter until the end of his days, unless his superiors teach him some discipline. Anyway, together with the men we've just conscripted from this village, we proceeded to lay waste to it, not because I wanted plunder, but because I needed experience. A couple of days later, just before I could put the finishing touches on my fiery piece of art, a Vlandian patrol rode to this village's defense and I was forced to leave my work unfinished. Before I took off, I paid really close attention to my surroundings, trying to determine the best direction to run towards, but something else caught my eye. A trade convoy that was escorted by a mere 27 guards. This gave me an idea. Why just run away from the patrol when I could also chase the caravan at the same time? So that's exactly what I've done. But the trader's movement speed was greater than ours. So in order to catch these guys, we'd have had to corral them towards the nearest forest where I have the advantage. I was successful in that endeavor, but when we caught up, the Vlandian patrol was still hot on our trail. If we walked away right now, there was no way they could have caught us, but if I were to engage into a fight with this caravan, my party would have gotten disorganized and we'd get slowed to a crawl, which would enable our pursuers to catch us. As much as I wanted to steal from these merchants, I had to let them go. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. As soon as we walked away, the Vlandian lord abandoned the pursuit, so I was free to attack whoever was unlucky enough to cross my path. Such as these villagers from Golarin, who are currently carrying their produce to the market. Let's see, what do they have? Some sheep, wool, butter and cheese that are worth a total of 1.5k. That's a nice contribution they're about to make to my coffers because as you know by now, if the villagers carry loot, you can squeeze most of it out of them. But when they carry money, you may not be able to get all of it as you've witnessed a bit earlier when we attacked the villagers of... Uh, Golarin? Oh damn, so these people sent a few of their lads to the market and they never returned, because uh, they met me. And now they've sent another party of peasants to sell their goods and come back with much needed gold, but I am here. And if these fellers are to return to their homes, they'll do so with empty pockets. I wouldn't want to live in Golarin right now, it seems to be having a run of bad luck. Sorry boys, looks like you'll be giving everything to me. I just need to help you find the proper motivation. When I was done with them, I put my sprinter perk to the test and it worked pretty well. I could keep up with the runners, but if I tried striking them down, I'd significantly slow down and miss my attack. So if I wanted to keep training my athletics, I'd still have to rely on my horse. Anyway, when they finally escaped from the battlefield, they left half of their cargo behind and I claimed it for myself. But this was only half of what I wanted, so it was time for another attack. You already know how this goes. I approached my victims, punctured three of their skulls and the rest scattered. But they could not be allowed to escape, so I gave my cavalry the order to charge. One by one, the peasants were dropping, but I wanted one of them to survive so that I could commit a robbery. And I waited for their numbers to dwindle, planning to stop the attack as soon as the countdown reached one. Unfortunately, my men were overzealous and killed the last two villagers at the same time and I had no one left to rob. Maybe I should have squeezed them, but even so, 75% of their loot is better than just half. It is regrettable that the second party from Golarin never returned home either. After that attack, I went back to the village of Veron in an attempt to finish my work, but someone else painted the final strokes and then took credit for the art piece that I have put together. Why am I salty about it? Because the more villages I raid, the more money I can extort out of the Vlandian nobility when they offer to make peace. Because I wasn't the one to finish burning this village, the Imperials take the credit for it, and I get less money. But it doesn't matter anymore. 
What matters is to finally pay a visit to my pals in Golrin, take their able-bodied men under my banner, and then burn their homes to the ground. The flames and the looting and the screaming made for the best birthday party I could hope for, and the celebrations lasted for more than three days, during which my rogue skill has increased by another three levels. While this village was getting raided, an imperial lady wandered by. Lysica. If I had fewer men with me, I might have interrupted the festivities to run away from her party, but because I was accompanied by 54 hardened raiders, Lysica's 56 couldn't do a thing to us. Not without putting her life on the line. Basically, if I have a large enough gang, I can raid with impunity. I am not quite there yet, so I'll take what I can get. Such as these sheep and dairy products that the villagers of Golarin will sorely miss. I do feel a bit bad for these guys. Throughout my journey in Calradia, I've never oppressed another settlement with such intensity. But I'm a bandit. I don't get paid for my remorse. Quite the opposite. So after we were done plundering, me and the gang traveled south, we wiped some looters out, and then I decided to test whether village extortion can provide me with roguery experience. If it does, it's not very noticeable because after doing this to a couple of settlements, I didn't even get a single skill point. Maybe I should have raided those places, but I did not want to tangle with the Western Empire just yet. I am still focused on the Vlandians, hopefully not for much longer. I have to admit I'm getting tired of them. So I went back north and prepared myself to attack these peasants from Usank, but moments before catching them, something else grabbed my attention. An Aserai caravan. Now I have heard tales about the people from the desert and how rich their merchants can be. I don't talk a lot with my men, but I always listen to their chatter. And while they were discussing potential profitable scores, the topic of Aserai caravans kept popping up. And now it's time to make my raiders happy and see for myself whether their stories are true. If we were to chase these merchants in an open field, they would have certainly escaped. But the convoy foolishly ran through the never-ending forests of Vlandia, where I had a speed advantage, so after about a day of relentlessly pursuing them, we caught the caravan and it was time to make a trade. Look, I have gathered a lot of loot, and selling everything in villages for a thousand dinars at a time can get exhausting. It's much better to liquidate all these assets to a caravan and get more money at once. And so, the traders offered me half of their 13,000 gold for all the weapons, armors and wares I sold them and once that was done, I was going to let them go. After they gave me everything, of course, they obviously refused. So I needed to make the argument that my people are better at killing than their people and as such, a deadly debate ensued. Compared to the peasants we've been oppressing thus far, these caravan guards can put up a fight. And unlike the bandits, they have formal training and are able to use actual battle tactics against us. Which renders my usual divide and conquer strategy absolutely useless because these guys aren't stupid enough to fall for that. Nah, the tactic I shall use today is simply named stand together. That's exactly what my opponents were doing as well and because they were at a disadvantage, they stood their ground waiting for us to make the first moves. Well, except for their horse archer who paid dearly for his arrogance. Because his horse was heavily armored as well as faster than my own, I took it for myself. I don't know if I'll get to keep it after the fight, cause the battle loot is shared equally among my men while I get the leftovers. That's the only way to balance out the fact that I get to claim all of the cargo and the money dropped by our victims. But I digress. While I was busy shooting the horse archer, my soldiers were marching towards what I considered to be the most optimal position for my bowmen to shoot at our foes. Well, my infantry forms a shield wall in front of them and draws enemy fire. As for the horsemen, they were told to stay behind the archers until further notice, just in case the enemy tries out a flanking maneuver. As the rangers were shooting, I found a strange sense of beauty in the sound of their crossbows being fired in quick succession. That is music to my ears. 
It did not take long for our bolts and arrows to kill a couple more enemies, and when that happened, their cavalry stampeded towards us. In response, I got my own to follow me and run interference. With their charge now foiled, the hostile horsemen scrambled to get an angle on our archers, but me and the cavalry quickly moved to protect their rear, while they continued their barrage. As for the infantry, they were allowed to kill anything that moves. The first of which was the opposing group of footmen, who quickly lost their nerve and got routed. To prevent my front line from chasing the runners, they were instead told to advance towards the active combatants, namely the enemy archers, and once they got closer, they were once again ordered to charge. And I've done the same with my cavalry as well, because by this point, the enemy was completely disorganized and on the verge of defeat. My job was to roam the battlefield looking for strays to put down and it didn't take long to find a target of my own and quickly shoot him off his horse. And just like that, the Ironborn crew succeeded in its very first caravan raid, but not without suffering some casualties. Ten of my warriors lost their lives in this attack, but they knew the risks. The bandit lifestyle is a gamble, and those of us who survived are now much, much wealthier than we were before. Especially me. At the end of this slaughter, I received 671 gold, which is precisely 10% of what the traders had left after purchasing everything I sold them. In addition to the money, I also got half of the cargo they were carrying, which included the stuff they just bought from me. Wares, armor, weapons... Finally, their fallen soldiers provided us with a lot of decent gear, most important of which was a saddle, because I've been riding bareback for over a year now, and my buttocks are concave because of it. I hope that this condition can be reversed. Anyway, to celebrate my achievement, I decided to wear one of these Talib, uh, tailored open headscarves that I've taken from one of the Aserai caravan guards. Perhaps it'll bring me good fortune. But after we were done looting the battlefield, I noticed that eight of the caravaneers escaped and they still owed me money. So I went after them and when I caught up, I told them, look fellers, all we need is your gold, we don't want to bother carrying all your stuff. So how about we make a deal? I'll give you your wares back and you pay us whatever you think they're worth. Then we'll let you go in peace. After the trade and raid combo we just served them, the merchants were suspicious but they had no better alternatives. So they reluctantly agreed that a trade is in their best interest and they offered me their remaining 6,000 gold for whatever I gave them. Weapons, shields, armor, horses, wood and other trade goods. But once they gave me their money, instead of saying farewell, I told them is... They gave each other a confused look, which prompted me to clarify. We'll let you go in peace, sis, if you don't give us everything you've got. Angered by my deception, they promptly rejected my offer, so it was time for round two. This time I simply gave my cavalry the order to charge, and when three of the caravaneers lay dead, the rest ran to save themselves and I let them go, because they no longer carry gold but loot, which can be squeezed out of them over the course of several attacks, even if they refuse to let themselves be robbed. And so, when the battle was done, I took half of everything they were carrying. And not only that, but I also got a Vlandian war horse which is great for field battles, as it can ram through enemies and withstand a lot more damage than the Batanian pony I rode for almost a year. Technically the pony was replaced with a desert horse I got from my first attack, but my point stands. But the caravan still had more to give, so the third round was inevitable. Even though it's 5 of them versus 38 of us, they were defiant, so I had no choice but to teach them the errors of their ways. All they had left were two swordsmen and three archers, and I thought I could take them all by myself. Now, infantry is pretty difficult to fight from horseback, so I mostly avoided them, trying to cut down the archers. Eventually, two of them got killed and the third one took to his heels. He would be the one I'd try to rob, while the swordsmen were sentenced to death. So I stepped down from the saddle and fought both of them at once, killing one and knocking out the other. Yeah! 
When I was done with them, I took whatever cargo they were still transporting, more specifically, half of what they had left. But there was one last feller to deal with, so I approached him and promised that I'll let him live, if he gives me everything he owns. But even though I was intending to keep this promise, I've broken the previous one I made, so he didn't believe me and he refused to go down without a fight. And down he did go when I sent my men to kill him, but somehow he survived. So I captured the guy and I was planning to sell him to the ransom broker, if I could sneak into a town. And with that, we're finally done looting this convoy and oh my drowned god, will you look at that? I now have 22 thousand dinars and enough loot that can probably fetch another ten thousand if I were to find a generous buyer. But most importantly, the morale of the crew is uh, high, because my brigands have been dreaming of raiding an Aserai caravan for quite a while and it was every bit as profitable as they were expecting. We may not yet have achieved the goal imposed upon us by Ukzug, I reckon we'll need one more chapter to get there, but at least we have managed to do the most important thing that every raider must master. Plundering a caravan and taking all its gold. Granted, it was not a robbery, but after selling most of my loot to them, I could squeeze the traders and get most of it back. Because as you know by now, after each and every attack, I can take half of their cargo. After the traders gave us all their money, the first attack I launched upon them gave me 50% of their inventory, which included the stuff I just sold, attack number 2 gave me another 25%, and attack number 3 gave me half of whatever they had left, which equates to roughly 12% of their total inventory. All in all, that's 87% of their cargo, which isn't 100% but is still a lot more than you'd get by attacking them just once. And through this method of raiding, the Black Tide crew is now guaranteed to amass an enormous amount of wealth, which would finally allow Balon to qualify as a proper robber baron. With that said, that's not the only way towards the attainment of this objective. But we'll see how we get there in the next episode of Bandit's Ballads, because this one must come to an end. So anyway, thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.